This is going to be a tricky old game, isn't it? You know, the Netherlands, uh, when we talk about who could win the Euros, they've got to be up there as favourites. Yeah, definitely. I think it'll be probably our strongest test since Savina's taken the job. I think, you know, we've done fantastically well, being quite ruthless in front of goal. Some of the games we've played against, people can say, well, they should win those games, those types of games. But I don't think we were winning those types of games under Phil Neville in that way and the ruthlessness. So, obviously, it's against her former team. She won the European Championship in 2017 with the Netherlands. So it'll be a strong test. And I think the girls, you know, these types of games against Switzerland, the Belgium the other day when they won 3-0, I think we haven't really had any strong tests, but Belgium, a relatively good team. And what I liked about what she did at half time is she made substitutions that could impact the game. And England ended up winning 3-0. Whereas I think in previous years, managers stick with the same team. No one really makes changes. They have preconceived uh, substitutions that they have in their heads. But she made in-game substitutions, and that's what I like about her. You talk about in-game substitutions. Serena Weinman, <coughs> obviously, been there, done it. Home tournament. <coughs> How much is the pressure on the girls to go and win this tournament? Because we're never going to have a better chance. The quality we've got, the league quality that we've got now, talk to me about that. How much pressure are the girls feeling? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll be feeling it for sure. And I think as it gets closer to the tournament, <coughs> now within two weeks of the first game at Old Trafford, it's sold out. You know, the final's sold out. There's a lot of people talking about this. So the one thing I've always questioned is our mentality. I think when you look at the US women's national team, they seem to know how to get it across the line, how to win. I'm mindful of how much pressure people put on the team because what people have to understand is sometimes this year is the first time people are really getting the publicity. There's no hiding anymore. When I played, you know, it was one, one game a year, the FA Cup final on t that was on TV. Whereas now it's almost like some of these players have been catapulted into the, t to the limelight. There's nine of these players. It's their first ever tournament. So I'm mindful of that. But you're right, Trevor. I think this is the perfect opportunity. If I was in that squad, I'd be absolutely buzzing because you can't beat playing in front of your home crowd. When I played at Wembley uh, against Germany a few years ago, it was fantastic. When you see the national anthem in front of your home crowd, it is the best feeling, as I'm sure you guys know. Leanne, looking at the games coming up, you've got Switzerland as well, I think, next week, isn't it? Um, do you think they... You know the starting eleven, or is there places up for grabs still? Would they mix and match the next two games, or would they put the strongest team out? I think that she's been putting out the strongest team to a certain degree. Alex Greenwood came on the other day. She had she was out a little while with COVID, and then Ellen White's out tonight with COVID as well. So it gives another person. I think probably Beth England will play tonight. I don't know that for sure, but I think it will give up opportunities. <laughs> but I think. Ultimately, she's got decisions she needs to make because for me, I think Leah Williamson should play in the back line as opposed to the midfield. Mm. I just think our team play better when she's there. I think Kira Walsh already does that job in there anyway. So both of them almost become redundant. But I think the types of players like, you know, Lauren Hemp, Chloe Kelly came on the other day and was fantastic. So it's going to give her food for thought because when players are coming on doing well and Beth Mead's had a really good year at Arsenal. So it'll be interesting. I think she more or less knows. I think managers going into tournaments they know their 15 or 16 players they're going to have whether they're going to play or not mm. starting 11 but then there's other players that have been picked based upon how well they're going to be around the camp you know you need players that are, kind of know how to get the players ready to go that's why I think players like Jill Scott have been selected based upon their leadership um, and experience because there's not that much in the squad when it comes to tournament football Leanne the Dutch players are they playing in their home leagues or are they scattered all over Europe I would say mostly all over Europe, and that's based upon the fact that they were so successful under Sina Wiegmann because in previous years they weren't the best team and then they went won the tournament. Then you see loads of their players going to play. Miedemar, Viviana Miedemar, for me, she's my favourite player to watch and she's always a threat and I think it's amazing and fantastic that my former club, Arsenal, were able to tie her down to another contract because I thought she was going to go. So they're going to be a real threatening team. They're going to want to prove a lot tonight, aren't they? They're playing against their manager that's left them to go to England. There's no, you know, sour grapes or anything like that. They're all hugging each other before the game yesterday in training. But as soon as you get across that white line, as you know, it, the, the friendship goes out the window. Leanne, you've seen, you know more than most, the professionalism, how it's improved, the league quality, the depth. We've talked about pressure, how much responsibility is on the, on the, on the women to make sure they do well, not just to do well for the tournament's sake and for their own, um, situation, but to keep the momentum, keep the investment and keep the interest in women's football. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's the perfect time, Trevor, because this year the women's game has gone to another level with regards to media, marketing, radio, all the games. When it comes to quality, 
I still beg to differ. It's if the quality's actually got better. I just think there's more eyes on it. And that's not because I, I'm saying it was better when I was playing. I think a lot of players will tell you the same thing. But obviously now the media coverage is there. So like I said, now all the clubs, there's no excuses anymore. You know, they train at St. George's Park. It's fully professional. They have all the facilities. They have everything they could ever, ever really wish for. And the fact that it's in England is a bigger incentive. So there can be no excuses. And I know there was a lot of talk yesterday in a press conference about how the players are going to manage themselves during this tournament because there will be more eyes on them. There will be more scrutiny and there will also be praise. And I'm actually really looking forward to it because I think it's probably going to be the first tournament we've probably ever had where people are not scared to kind of say their opinions. Because I think sometimes, especially for, for men, it's difficult for them to critique the women's game and people not accuse them uh, yeah. of being sexist when actually they're just giving an opinion. And that's kind of like where, where I'm excited for because I want people, everybody, to critique the women's game as you would a men's game. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.